Good morning, St. Francis, and good morning, people of God. Oh my gosh, there she is! Um, it is Thursday, the 20, uh, what is it, 24th day, 24th day of October 2024. It is Thursday of the 29th week, of the year of the 29th week in ordinary time. And if we go right over here again, it is once again, it is morning pickup, or morning drop-off, morning pickup, morning drop-off here at the Franciscan School um, on the last, probably our last day that it may be a little bit warm. So uh, we're gonna see what, you're gonna see what happens um, as we go through this day. Uh, and hopefully it'll get cooler soon. Is, yeah, uh, maybe we'll be on TV. Um, yes, uh, it's gonna hopefully be a little bit cooler uh, beginning tomorrow because this has just been so ridiculous. Um, with all of this heat that has come in again when actually it should be fall. So so, so we are going um, to, uh, let's see, we're going to celebrate today a very special tradition here at the Franciscan School, um, the great statue of St. Francis and the Wolf of Gubbio that is in our courtyard. Um, one of the um, uh, reasons for placing it in there uh, was that it be a source of not only blessing for, the, for our school, but it also be a source of good wishes and good intents uh, within the Franciscan school itself. And so a tradition that began that fell away that we just retrieved again here at the Franciscan school was the opportunity to rub Gubbio's nose around the anniversary of the statue's placement in the courtyard, uh, which happened sometime in October, November. Nobody remembers the date again. You got to find out what it actually it was. Uh, but this is, uh, but so this is one of our great traditions where everyone uh, is going to be asked to rub Gubbio's nose and uh, in doing so uh, to have a great wish uh, for the school um, and for uh, the year that has come. And this year especially because it is our 25th anniversary um, as the Franciscan school. So we'll be starting to rub Gubbio's nose um, in, in a few minutes as part of our morning prayer. Uh, but on this Thursday of the 29th week of the year, uh, we have Ephesians again continues. Chapter 3, uh, which is the great... Um, uh, speech, uh, the great, the great blessing, the great speech of blessing, the great blessing that Fra uh, that Paul offers the Church of Ephesus, um, that because of what Christ has done in their lives, that they may understand and comprehend the world in ways that human beings cannot comprehend or understand, and that it all be grounded in love. Um, again, this this whole idea, this wonderful, uh, these wonderful verses in chapter three, um, in which Paul basically celebrates what has happened to the Church in Ephesus um, and how it has begun to see things differently. Um, and not necessarily as this Greek and Roman culture, you know, has led people to believe the world is. That's always true for us as human beings. That's true for what it means uh, for us to live as believers in the world, to see and think differently, to hope differently, to observe differently, to react differently, to respond differently. That is what we are called to do because that difference lies in Christ and in Christ's um, presence in our lives, in Christ's courage and power that that, that gives to our lives. Um, we are not the same kind of people when we embrace faith. It is not just one job or one opportunity or one endeavor after another, but it is something that begins to change to shape, um, again, our very selves and our very being and all that we say and all that we do. Uh, Paul celebrates that um, in the church at Ephesus. It is meant to be continually celebrated in those who have continued uh, to embrace the faith as the church in Ephesus did. Um, that then is matched with this passage from Luke, in which Jesus, again, has one of these very extreme and volatile moments in his ministry. Um, and basically, because again, with the um, obstinacy of the Pharisees or the inability of the Pharisees uh, to, to, to listen and to pay attention to what Jesus is doing, he basically goes again to a great extreme, which may have some kernels of truth in it. And that is again being sake, saying, I have not come to establish peace, uh, but to set fire you know, to the world and how he wishes that it was already burning. And then talks about division, sowing division between uh, fathers and sons and mothers and daughters and father-in-laws and mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws and sister-in-laws and brothers and sisters and all kinds of things like that, that what Jesus is doing is not basically just a walk in the park. What Jesus is saying for us to be is a total and radical reassessment of our human lives and what it is that we thought was important and what was up is now down, what is important is no longer important. Again, all of these things, which perhaps is a good uh, matching with the Ephesus uh, chapter, the Ephesus reading, uh, or the Ephesians reading, uh, is that basically, again, to be a believer in this world is to be a people to think and act differently, to be a people who recognize that there is more to human life uh, than, there, than, than basically the pursuit um, of, of empty goals and, 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 and empty dreams, uh, that we are built for much more, that we um, are created for much more. Um, and in that, basic, in, in that recognition, maybe it will put us at odds you know, with those who 
continue to think as the world does, who continue to think that life is just that and nothing more, uh, who refuse you know, to listen uh, to the great words of hope and wonder and beauty in our lives. Yes, it, will, it is a challenge. Yes, it may make life difficult. Yes, this is not a pursuit for the weak of heart or the faint of heart, but this is something that allows for us to have courage to see the world differently, to see the world as God sees it, and in that sight, to find renewed hope and renewed understanding. A blessed day, St. Francis and people of God. May the Lord give you his peace.